enter for engine valves, they sometimes pour um, some lead block to warm up. And the animal using in the title song strategy, they uh, for every daily excursion around the low tide into the in the tidal zone near the colony, and uh, they sometimes uh, submerge into the tide pool or be washed by the wet. The after for aging, they also spot on sunny rock to heal them up. Uh, this picture shows that feeding strategy are uh, wet related. The axis is the strategy and the y axis is the wet. And uh, you can see uh, when animal is less than 1200 grams, they are uh, in the tidal feeders. And the animal above uh, 1080 grams, uh, they are almost some type of feeders. And the animal between this range, they tend to follow a miss, a miss a for aging strategy. So we can know that their for aging strategy is wet related, not set specific. However, the final measurement of male is larger than the female. So the for for every strategy, it's almost, uh, it's more, the male is more than female. Uh, this picture shows that in the type of feeders are influenced by, by the type and by the sea condition. As you can see, the wave goes on the marine iguana's number goes down. So uh, the web is stronger, the marine iguana is less on the in the tidal zone. And then this picture shows the timing of for aging in relationship to the tide. The rest of the home is Subtitle feeders. And uh, uh, you can see they always uh, for aging around this late morning to early afternoon. This means that their for aging is independent in, in of the tide. And the yellow circle is in the tidal feeders. Uh, as you can see, they only for age at low tide about 50 minutes later daily. But uh, marine iguana can't for edge after the sunset because uh, uh, there is no enough time and uh, enough energy for them to warm up. So if their body temperature is too cool, they can move efficiently and uh, maybe uh, they eat by this uh, Galapagos hawk, the uh, eagle living there. So they must change their foraging tides from evening to morning uh, when the low tide is uh, after the sunset. <coughs> and uh, this is our Cooling experiment result. The x axis is the time, and the, the y axis is the delta t. The delta t means the difference between the body temperature and the, the water. And the, you can see that when the the smaller the marine iguana is, the cooler the rise in the water. Best. However, 
This is not the case in the nature. The green circle means in the type of feeders, and the blue cycle blue cycle means some kind of feeders. So you can find that the body temperature of in the type of feeders is higher than the body temperature of some type of feeders. And the, this is because the in the type of feeders fit in an environment where the those heat much more slowly, and then they can get from the sun more sunlight when voyaging. Uh, finally, it's the part of discussion. Uh, marine iguanas below the 1,200 grams are in the tidal feeders, and the above 1,800 grams are subtidal feeders. And the, between that, they have a uh, missed foraging strategy. And uh, both sides gradually become subtidal feeders as they approach uh, 1,800. And, uh, uh, less change, change strategy vary from island to island, depend on the size of intertidal zone, the abundance of food in the intertidal zone and subtidal area, the density of the iguana population. So why subtidal feeders for edge don't forage on the intertidal zone? There are some advantages. Uh, there are greater independence of weather conditions the independence of tide cycle and, uh, so they can eat any time and the more food is take uh, avoid competition with smaller competitions the marine don't adapt into any fish like uh, because they don't they have special psychological mechanism for body temperature the body temperature for is uh, 35 degrees the all slide inverting and the reproduction take place on that. Uh, this is my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Alright, so 12 minutes, 12 minutes, 20 seconds. Give it. Because there are some 
for the language. And that means that data is uh, dependent on the weather condition. It means that if the, the web is stronger, it still can go to C and uh, it stops. It's LG. But if they are in the type of feeders, they can't because they are too small. They can uh, against the web. The independence of time cycle is because they are at all thermal iguana. So they have to warm up themselves. They can be too cool, their body temperature. So if the tide is if the low tide is after sunset, they can't go to it. I have so. a cup here. Lina. Why a smaller iguana can dive into the sea? And this why smaller iguana can swim in the sea, mm -hmm. dive in the sea? Uh, it's because the bite and temperature uh, falling too fast. And uh, their swimming skill is not as good as fish. So if they uh, too small, their size is too small. They can against the web. Uh, who is next? I think I missed one, someone. Ryan. Okay. Uh, the the they change their color in the different Is they change their color in different? Different what? Different land. Different land. Uh, actually, I don't know, but they live on the island of Galapagos, so there are many diversity. It's a very different environment on different islands. Ten. How do you map the How to mark the the capture then? <coughs> we capture them by their tail or not a uh, long time to catch them. How to mark? How to mark? Yeah. Uh, by a plastic tag. And the pen number on their plane. One to your question, any? Jay? Mm -hmm. Any? Okay, Jay. Is there, uh, I mean, you introduced two kinds of uh, iguana. One is subtitle and the other is intertitle. And does their habitat overlap? Or? Uh, uh, in one space. There are two kinds of variety stretch. So you can you may see the small one is on the in the title and you know, the double one is in the subtitle. One more one to your question, Annie. Uh, okay. Your name. Sorry? Yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I don't know how many you are you in the research? <laughs> <laughs>
he used the, uh, the header to make, draw the main conclusion. And also, most slides, except the discussion slides, he has uh, he used large forms and uh, short text, but I will later have some comments regarding the discussion slides. And also, you can see that he has uh, this guideline for his figure, so uh, it's easy to follow. But now we'll address the weakness. First of all, you need to look at the audience more often. Were you reading the script? Yes, okay. I hope you will be uh, more fluent next time and look at the audience. And uh, one thing that's definitely missing is uh, you have introduction, introduction. Okay, the introduction part is good. And then uh, it's like uh, you jump directly from introduction to methods. So you did not tell us what, it, what you want to achieve. You need a purpose line. It can be even just one sentence saying what you want to do, what you want to answer. Okay. And then you have some uh, t uh, terms that you really need to explain. For example, I cannot find them now. What, what is bouts? You, I, I, you can explain next time. I, if I have this question, then they would have this question. You know? What is bouts and what is excursion? So if these are the words that you need to check dictionary when you were preparing the PPT, then that would be the words you need to use three second explaining. Okay, so you need, you need to explain that next time. Okay, and then one thing that should be avoided next time would be you should not allow your header, your important header, to overlap with your figure. This would be better. Okay. And, uh, and I think uh, very often, probably not all, but very often you did not introduce your axis, especially this one. This one, if I were you, these two figures are so-called busy figures because you see a lot of data points. If I were you, I would definitely show just one figure at one time and make sure to make it super big so that everyone can look at the detail clearly. <coughs> because you have three axes. So you need to explain what, what this is, what this and that is, and they are, and so on. So we need to explain them well. So you try to use one figure instead of many small figures on one slide. Okay, okay the very last point would be your discussion. Uh, your discussion is a bit, uh, you know you spoke all the time. So you need to cut down, that's for sure. And I would say, uh, next time you check clearly what will be the key message that's directly linked to your data, and then uh, discuss these points. Focus on these points, and maybe skip other points. Because many, very often, the paper has more information than you can present in your talk. So you need to be selective. So you need to know what would be the most important message delivered by this paper, and then you can use this message only. Okay? So I hope you will speak into the time window next time. Okay, so thank you, uh, Edgar.